Everything seems to be going uh, exceedingly right. well. You just heard uh, Mission Control say it's a great bird. Things are going fine. They're just south of San Luis Obispo, just about over San Luis Obispo on the coast here now. In another minute, they'll be south of Bakersfield. They're descending rapidly. They're at about 125,000 feet now and going around six Mach. That's six times the speed of sound. Another minute, they'll be over Bakersfield or south of it at 103,000 feet at 2,500 miles an hour. And then uh, we're going to down here uh, hear a sonic boom. We hope we can pick it up for you this time uh, as uh, the spacecraft passes right over us at about 50,000 feet, right over our uh, anchor position here at Edwards Air Force Base. That comes just about three minutes before the end of the flight or around 1.19, uh, something like that, uh, Pacific time. Uh, in another, in other words, another 14 minutes from our, what, uh, nine, nine, eight or nine minutes from now, Leo. Uh, the, the everything's gone well as a spacecraft. Now the uh, the orbiter gets its real test. Does it fly like an airplane? Uh, that test is coming just now, uh, and in the next uh, ten minutes we'll know. And of course we expect it to. Uh, it's going to be a tough landing, as Leo said before. Much much rougher than the first one. We've uh, the wind has come up here on the ground to 25 knots. Uh, that's 20 around 25 miles an hour. Uh, what it is up there where he's got to make that critical turn at around 25, 30,000 feet, we haven't heard lately, but a little while ago when Don Young uh, ran a test flight through there, it was at 90 miles an hour. So uh, he's going to be flying a, a bird with uh, no power at all, a dead stick landing that used to be called in the days of the quiet birdman. And the Walter, uh, pardon me for interrupting, but I think on the screen we can see the orbiter now. The I believe you side. can. You can indeed. You can indeed. That picture, Dan, is from uh, Santa Inez. Uh, it's a long-range camera. Uh, it's got it out uh, there a long way away now. yet. But you do see Roger. just a spot occasionally. And of course, that orbiter will be getting much larger very quickly. He's still proceeding uh, at a speed of range of 74 miles. You heard 90,000 feet. That's a, uh, from the chase plane. The chase planes are up there high, and I believe that photograph of the space uh, orbiter itself came from one of those uh, chase planes. There is a... Sorry, go ahead, Walter. I think that first stop... Roger, we're looking at it. I believe those shots are from Santa Inez camera, uh, Dan. Uh, it's a long-range camera. Uh, mounted just inside the coast on one of the Columbia mountain ranges here. Take the air data. Welcome. Well, from wherever the shot came, what a welcome shot it was. And uh, I have, I'm not ashamed to say so. What a thrill it was, uh, even though we've seen it before, to see that spacecraft come back into sight uh, and with everything working fine and the astronauts uh, uh, hearing their, the voice of and Joe Engel, the pilot. Uh, PTI 5, Mark. You're right getting here. chase plane pictures now, of course, Dan. And there is a woman astronaut, Kathy Sullivan, in one of the two chase planes uh, that meet Everything Columbia at about 35,000 feet. Joe, and we have a wind update for you and a weather update. Uh, you've got a very thin layer at 25,000. The winds airborne are as brief and on the ground, 220, 18 knots, gusting to 24. Altimeter is 30 decimal, 07. You got 60 miles viz underneath. Over. Walter, in that picture, you can you, you certainly get a sense of how the orbiter is hurtling down toward Earth. Yes, it's flying like an airplane, but with that weight uh, and speed, uh, how it is hurtling toward Edwards Air Force Base. 68,000. Oh yes, he he uh, uh, he descends about 9,000 feet in the very last part of the maneuver in uh, just a matter of seconds. We should be getting the sonic boom here in about another 20, 30 seconds. Let's listen for it, Leo Krupp. Angle continuing to fly the test maneuver. Sixty thousand feet. That's your convenience. Transfer the safe vector from the pad to the event. You're almost done. Reasonable rig second, please. Roger. A state vector transfer. Pass to BFS. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you very much. Seven, 
50,000 feet, Mach 1, range 27 miles. Dan, it's incredible, but we can see that with the naked eye. Roger, you're tracking right down the line. That's incredible. He's right overhead from us. It's way up there. Wow, it sounded like somebody let off a 155 millimeter howitzer right under a auto desk. 22 miles range. From Houston, we show you intercepting the hack. And a reminder, you've got the strong winds out of the west. Now out of, okay, right. out of 38,000 feet. Intercepting the hack. That means that's where okay, he has to start his turn. It's where he's taking control, flying that airplane around. Yeah, we got that. a little bit of PTI zero in, but not too much. That's the last PTI. He had to get that Roger. in before he could go manual. What an incredible talent it takes to fly this large orbiter at this speed and how many years of experience it takes to do it. We'll be making a wide sweeping turn now to get lined up with the runway. Good television picture. 25,000 feet. I mean, Houston about 3,000 feet low now out of 24,000 feet. Roger that. Handshakes we're showing 290 at uh, 20,000. Okay, we're about to be with you at 19. Check body flap to manual. Roger, body flap caught manual. 280 knots at 18,000 feet. At this point, he's you dropping. See him with the naked eye. At a degree of about 19, 19 degrees down, coming down fast. Okay. At 2,000 feet, he'll begin to flare out. Roger, still just slightly low on the energy, looking okay. That's the camera that's jiggling, not the spacecraft. Nine miles range at 13,000. Speed brakes coming close. Chase is aboard. You can see the, t the chase plane Roger, just below. Slightly below glide slope. You're below the glide slope. You have a go for auto land. Okay, Rick. Thank you, sir. How serious is that being below the glide slope, uh, Leo? That's not serious at all, and he's been cleared to engage auto land as soon as he he got the needle centered. Now he's he's on auto. He's letting the auto land Roger. system fly it down to 2,000 feet. Then he'll take over manually again, do a manual landing, touch down, and roll out. He's now completed his uh, turn through the through the uh, dangerous wind buffeting, so he's coming in directly into the wind, and he's in good shape, right? That's right. There's Check speed brake auto. Okay, speed brake body flap auto. Everything's off. Thank you. I anticipate he won't roll out near as far as John Young did because uh, with this strong wind, he'll, he'll stop much shorter than the intersections of the runway. About a minute well, away from touchdown. It's the second time man has done it, but what a sight it is to see a spacecraft come landing here like an airplane. It is an airplane now. No power of its own. A very tricky landing. Unpowered 75-ton airplane landing at two or three times the speed of a DC-9, which is its size counterpart. But a remarkable and thrilling sight. Clouds cooperated here. 2,500 feet, speed brakes are closed. We're at 270 knots. He's got, he's got the brakes closed because of this high wind. He's a little low on energy, okay. so he closed his speed brakes early. Okay. This is the end of a 5,000. There come his wheels. There come his wheels, Leo. Wheels down. That, that was the last critical function, really. Get those wheels down. 30, 20. 10, 5, 3, touchdown. Nose gear 15. How about that? Ten. Now watch. What a beautiful Ten. landing. This is critical when the nose Five. slaps over. Three. Joe's letting it down Touch nice down. and easy. Thank you, Chase. That was beautiful.
You got a good picture of those brakes right now, Leo, those, those aileron brakes. Uh, uh, on the, the split rudder, uh, the speed yeah. brakes. Shuttle control, the unofficial touchdown time and mission elapsed time is two days, six hours, 13 minutes, 10 seconds. Space Shuttle 2 is down safely with astronauts Repeat that, uh, Engel and Truly. Down three days earlier than Six was originally hours. scheduled because of a faulty fuel cell. One of the three fuel cells developed trouble and had to be shut off. But most, if not all, of the scientific experiments and experiments with the spacecraft itself uh, for which the flight was designed were accomplished. 